Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. In today's video we'll be going over my character design process, why I make certain decisions and how I write their stories. Also I'll discuss how I make my mood boards. First, let's take a look at how this all started. I was scrolling through my old Instagram posts when I found one from 2017, I think. I remember loving it, but never getting the chance to finish it. At the time, I was super proud of how I posed her and I was working on my backgrounds as well. I still am quite happy with it as a reflection of my skills at the time. I decided I wanted to redraw it and get a feel for how much I've improved, so I decided to make a little mood board to hone in on some of her design elements. This is how I got to one of my current OCs that didn't exist at the time. Her name is Kale. She is a part of a little fantasy universe I have been creating. The continent is called Etheria. A solar flare has long wiped out technology. Humanity's war depleted the ozone layer. Divine forces transformed humans into gods. Due to human nature, these gods and goddesses waged war and eventually nine known gods and goddesses remained. Due to the brutality of the war, they no longer had physical forms. They instead brought forth nine races. Elves, witches, vampires, kitsune, changelings, gnomes, dwarves, humans, and spirit animals. The world is governed by these long forgotten gods and goddesses who are lost to history. Lumina City is governed by the vampires. Ethereum Mountains have a sentient maze and the kitsune twins Kale and Lyro are at the center of it all. Kale is a skilled rogue assassin. She operates from a hidden loft in Lumina City. She picks up odd jobs such as heist, assassinations and covert missions. She is cunning, charming, solitary and intelligent. Lumina City has a steampunk Victorian aesthetic with hints of bioluminescence. The vampires constantly conducting experiments and searching for breakthroughs in science cause the city to have an otherworldly ambience. The vampiric thirst for knowledge is what has shaped this city. All of this is important to our character design of Kao. At this stage of my process, Procure Dreams had just released and I thought making an animation of Kao and an introduction to Luminous City would be the perfect introduction to the program. I'm not an animator so decided to hone in on the first 3 second clip of her turning her head. This meant completely narrowing down her character design to fine details. I break this down in a mood board starting with locations, personality, general inspo and face and clothes. The location of the world has to dictate elements of her design. I have already established a steampunk Victorian era with elements of magical bioluminescence. This can show in multiple ways in the design of her clothes and colour palette, patterns and even the tone of her personality. I spent a good hour researching Victorian fashion, repeating patterns and motifs and even the architecture. We have to remember she's a mistress of the shadows so she will be navigating fields or an urban jungle. The steampunk aesthetic is generally associated with mechanical and industrial motifs like gears and clock symbolism, pipes and rusty colours. I kept this in mind for her colour palette since she is most likely going to blend into these areas. When designing her outfit, I wanted to keep in mind the Victorian element of the locations. This meant poofy sleeves, high necklines and decorative blouses. Typically, women wore long flowing skirts in the Victorian era, but as she's a rogue, I didn't think it would be practical for her to wear a skirt, which is why I put her in plain black pants. I also pictured the location being hot, like hot pipes and steam, so on her legs, I wanted her boots to be very tall to allow for any hot pipes to not burn through to her legs. When designing Kale and Lareo, they are Kitsune twins based on a red fox and an arctic fox. Kale is based on a red fox. I did tons of research into fox behaviour and personality and wanted to adhere to that when designing her. Cunning, intelligent, nocturnal, solitary and secretive were all repeated traits I saw in foxes so these are her main traits too. I wanted this to reflect in her design as much as possible. Her eyes glow in the dark and amber colour for example. This reflects both her kitsune heritage and the way eyes glows when lights are shone on them, as if the lights of the city are coming from within her. Due to her being nocturnal, she would need to have a dark enough colour palette to blend into both the skyline and the city. This meant giving her elements of adaptability. She wears a dark cloak with a hood and face covering when she needs to blend into darkness and doesn't want to be seen. 
Under her cloak, she wears a decorative blouse which allows her to blend into the crowd and blend in in plain sight. She can wear the cloak on her waist as a makeshift skirt if she needs to as well. She typically wears her hair tied up into braids so that it doesn't cover her face when she's running. When she wears her hair down, it's a beautiful long gradient reflecting the colour of a fox, orange to black. General inspirations come from researching Pinterest and finding elements of design that I like. I found a really cool steampunk kitsune mask but didn't know if it would fit her design so I put it on the mood board to see if I could use it as inspiration. Other images that would fit here are images to my own artwork and some of my favourite artists. Referencing my own artwork is so important because I like to keep in mind what I liked and didn't like about my previous work. This is what I think helps me to improve, having that element of critical reflection in every drawing that I make. Face and clothes inspiration comes from all of the previous work we have done researching elements of her design. I try to never take inspiration from one source and instead try to combine multiple elements of things I like. So for example, I save a bunch of corset designs to my mood board that I like but I may not think they suit her design. I thought I would put her in a corset and I even tested out drawing it but when I did it, I just didn't think it would be reasonable for her design she wouldn't have the flexibility so it just wouldn't be practical for her established story so far whereas a blouse is more period accurate allows her flexibility to move and blend into a crowd her shoes and shoe covers and pants are carbon fiber to allow her the most adaptability when running and hiding it is also a durable material that would be able to withstand the high heat of luminosity and the wear and tear that kill would be putting on it These are all things that I thought about as I was designing the character. Every element has a purpose and a reason. I have been slowly building up this little universe and had so much fun exploring Kale specifically. I think this is one of my first OCs that I put this much thought into outside of a video game like Elder Scrolls Online. This is also my first time designing a character turnaround sheet. I definitely struggled a little bit with the pose which I think you can see but I really do think I have come so far in terms of skill. If you're wondering what brushes I'm using throughout this process, they're actually my own brushes that I made myself. I have a free brush pack on my coffee that you can download some of my brushes from, and so that will be linked in the description if you would like to see them for yourself. Kale's colour palette generally sticks pretty closely to the rust theme of steampunk because I'm fully aware that due to her occupation of being a rogue, she is going to be trying to blend into all of these pipes and dark areas of Luminous City, so I really wanted to make sure to capture that in her design. If you're interested in a drawing of your own character and exploring their story a little bit more, I have my commissions linked in the description below. We are now coming to the end of the video, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to follow me on social media to stay up to date with all of my most recent artwork. I really hope you enjoyed the video, I will see you in the next one. Bye!